Someone asked me if I'm on the left or on the right, and I presume they mean politically speaking. So, uh, I'm going to risk alienating a few people and tell you what I think. We should be able to have these conversations with people getting upset, though. So even if you totally disagree with me, this is just what I think. It's not what I think you need to think. So I'm just going to spill it. So, <clears throat> uh, generally speaking, I'm not for any groups. I'm for individuals. So I'm not for a left or a right. I think individuals are where it's at. And that statement is going to require some explanation. So. So as far as I can tell right now, the left and the right, and this isn't just like, you know, people down the street. I mean, people in leadership positions who need a position because they're not real leaders. They couldn't lead without an official position that says they're the leader. Anyway, the left and the right are doing the same thing, which is basically trying to rule over everyone and in the process, sucking the motivation out of everyone. All right, so <clears throat> let's start with the left. On the left, they want socialism. And I'm generalizing here, there's a lot more to it, but I'm not gonna make this a 14 hour video. So on the left, they want socialism, which basically means they, they take the stuff from everyone and spread it out evenly amongst everyone um, <clears throat> to, to kind of make sure that everyone has the same amount of stuff. And one of the problems with this is the only way to really make sure everyone has the same amount of stuff is to make sure everyone has nothing, because then everyone has the same amount of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but what is, what is the, the real basic problem with this entire premise? It is, uh, let me give you an example, I'll try to come up with a simple one. Okay, say, say you work in a wheat field, and you go every day and you work hard and you work hard all day tending the field getting sweaty and tired and at the end of the day oh you're just wiped out sweating wiping the sweat off your brow and you walk home and you see a group of people lounging around with dozens of donuts and they're stuffing the donuts in their face and they're just filled with donuts and they're dropping donuts on the ground and they're covered with donuts and you're looking at them thinking this is this is your wheat that you've been slaving away for just so they can kill themselves and that's so demotivating so the next day you go to work feeling a little less motivated about making this wheat that someone's just going to take away from you and give to other people and uh, that's that's the big problem is there's a huge incentive to do nothing because the less you do in a in a socialist society the more you get the more you do, the more is taken away from you. So it just sets up this, 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 this incentive that says, do as little as possible, as little as you can get away with. Now on the right, they do things very differently. They try to set up this competition between everyone and everyone has to fight. Everyone's always fighting to get the next step up. So you get everyone lined up in their pecking order and you crap on the person below you and you have to do what the person above you says, but then you, you keep fighting, everyone's fighting all the time to get a, to, to get a higher spot. <clears throat> now everyone's so busy fighting, they don't have time to do anything. And the people who are doing things don't have time to get into this fight of dominance. They're too busy feeding everyone and making the cars and doing the real stuff. And the people who are, who are doing stuff end up at the bottom of this ridiculous hierarchy because they're just not in the fight they're like I'm too busy making it so we can all live to get in your arguments and fights and do all this garbage so again you have a huge incentive to not do things but instead to waste your time talking you know trying to trying to sound official and speak with a with a dominating voice and and get physically dominating and stuff and, you know, just take from other people and push them down and try to get up the hierarchy. And again, it's just, people just end up not motivated to do things. So in a nutshell, you know, on the right, they walk up to you and punch you in the face. On the left, they sneak around behind you and stab you in the back. But they're doing basically the same thing, just tearing people down. 
Now, the left often complains about the right's capitalism. <clears throat> and then the right says, this is so, I'm so tired of hearing this, but the right says, <clears throat> well, the people with all the money, they're the ones who've earned it. And uh, let me give you a little, a little story, a little anecdote about this. Um, I've had some dealings with the business world, most recently when I was working in the toy industry. And I was an inventor, so I would come up with products, and I would end up in meetings with big wig CEOs of huge stores, stores you've definitely heard of. So I'd be in these meetings with these CEOs, and they would just come in to try to, like, get us to make certain type, certain types of things. And the, the meetings always went the same. Every, every one of these big stores. The person would start suggesting things that I knew nobody wanted. It's just junk, garbage. And then I'd try to nudge them back, like, wait, hey, why don't we make some, some kind of cool stuff? And then they'd try to nudge back, no, make crap. Now, one day I'm sitting in, in, a, in a meeting, <clears throat> having this back and forth. They're trying to push this way, I'm trying to push this way. And the guy says, okay, look, I, I don't think you're getting it. Which is ironic, because I totally got it. I don't think he got it. But anyway, I don't think you get what's going on here. Look, I'm just going to spell it out for you. We needed to make garbage. Because we can sell garbage all day. Because what we're really selling is a promise. A promise that this is a beautiful, amazing product, and you're going to love it, and it's going to be amazing. But then the kid gets it home, and it's terrible. And they end up with this empty feeling, uh, just total dissatisfaction. So what do they do? They wind to their, wind to their parents to go back to the store and buy another thing. The problem is, if you give them something, if you sell them something they like, they're too busy at home playing with it to come buy more stuff. This guy's very, very passionate about this. So we make billions of dollars off this premise of we promise something good, we don't deliver, and they just keep coming back and buying and buying and buying. And I'm just sitting there trying not to throw up in my mouth the whole time. So... <clears throat> And this was not an isolated incident. This was this was just the way, the way it went. Every one of these meetings. So, no, the the people with all the money are not doing are are not. They don't have all the money because they're doing the best stuff. Usually, they're lying, cheating, and stealing to get it. What the left and the right are talking about when they say capitalism is different things. And and people will use the term capitalism like two times in a sentence with different meanings each time. So let me just give a definition right here that I'm going to use. Capitalism is when you define the value of everything in capital, in dollars. So you get some, everything is valued in some number with a money symbol beside it. That's the value of everything. The problem there is that some things can't be, can't be measured in an amount of money. <clears throat> so those things end up becoming irrelevant. So your personal honor, your, your love for your children. And you see this when people send their kids to daycare so they can work for money that doesn't even pay for the daycare. Oh, <clears throat> that's a whole other video worth of stuff. But anyway, so that's these CEOs, they don't care about their personal honor or making customers happy or any of the stuff. All they care about is the money. And that's, the, that's capitalism as I'm using the term in this video. And the, the, the problem with that system is so obvious <clears throat> because all the most valuable stuff in the world cannot be measured in money. And that stuff ends up becoming the least valuable by perception. Now the left could point this out very easily and just tear down this capitalism idea. The problem is they're doing the same thing. The left and the right are both capitalists. The right are collecting all the money, and the left are saying, well, you guys have more money than us, just give us the money. They're not trying to get rid of the capitalism. They're not saying, look at money differently. They're just saying, no, we just want the capitalism over here. <clears throat> and what the right was talking about when they were saying that people who do the best stuff end up with the most money, they're talking about a free market, which is not capitalism. You can have a... I don't think you can even have a free market 
with capitalism. Because once you have money that someone else controls, you, you don't have free exchange of stuff anymore. Because the money is controlled by someone, it's printed by someone, every time you transact with it, they, they take a piece, they're controlling the money, they're controlling all the transactions. So once you have to use their money in the way they say, there is no free market. So don't give me this free market crap. There should be a free market though. People should be free to exchange whatever they want, whenever they want, as long as both parties are in agreement. And uh, the government should stay out of it, but they, uh, they just want to take everything and skim off the top. <clears throat> okay, so, so if I'm so against these things, what am I for? I am for individual morality. So in a, in a lot of cultures where there have been disasters in the past, you can, you can go through a whole set of decisions where individuals made a clearly immoral choice. This guy did it, then that guy did it, then that guy did it, and another person, another person, and just like so, like hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people made immoral decisions because they were part of this group that decided how they should behave. They had a code of conduct, and all these individuals, instead of thinking about what they thought was right, they decided to go along with what the group said to do. But if all those people instead said, no, I'm going to do what I think is right, a lot of problems could have been avoided. So I've been doing something of an experiment with this over the last, I don't know, like 20 years with my own life. I started just doing what I think is right, disregarding laws to the most, to, to the largest extent that I can without getting thrown in jail or whatever. And I gotta tell you, a lot of things have changed in a really positive direction. Like I have an awesome relationship with my kids. It is difficult to relate to a lot of normal people because, you know, they're, they're not individuals. But um, one of the big things that's changed is the way I think about money. So one of the things that, you know, rules the world today is money. Money rules the world. Money makes the world go round. You know, I hate that crap. Ugh, catchphrases. So most people think about... Uh, objects having a, a dollar value. But it's much more useful to think about money having a value equivalent to what it does or what it gets. So that you're not defining the value of the things with the money. You're defining, you're defining the value of the money with the things. So here's an example. Say you, uh, you have five dollars. <clears throat> And say you're one of those donut loving people. I like donuts, donuts are great. So you go to the store, buy five dollars worth of donuts, and you go stuff your face with them. Basically making yourself sick. So what was the value of that five dollars? What was it like? Negative 10 hit points or whatever. Basically you just made yourself sicker. Now, rewind a little bit, take that same five dollars. Say you go and buy a hammer. And then you use that hammer to build a house, and a chair, and some other furniture, and use it to fix your car, and use it to smash that horrible bug that's been bothering you. And you do all this stuff with it, and 40 years later, you pass this hammer on to some kid. And when you hand over the hammer, you remember, oh wow, I got this 40 years ago. Wow, what was the value of that $5? Now, some people are going to say, Oh, you can't get a good hammer for five bucks. It's going to break the first day. Well, this is how you start thinking differently when you start valuing the money based on what it can do. Instead of just going to the store and buying the first junky hammer you can find, you start looking around. <clears throat> looking at uh, classifieds or yard sales, and you buy some hammer that some guy has already had for 50 years. It was built in the, in the, the 50s or the 60s. The thing's indestructible. And he sells it to you for a buck fifty. Because he says, ah, you're going to get some good use out of this. And the guy understands that the, the money isn't the thing. The thing is he's passing value and he knows that you're going to take that value and increase it in the world. You're going to increase value in the world, not just value everything by this stupid number on a piece of paper. So those two original five dollars, one ended up having negative negative value in the world, the other one had massive positive value in the world. 
just based on how a person used them. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is the, you know, the right thing to think or the only thing to think, but this is what I've been doing, and it's working really well. So this is the basic gist in a very small nutshell. <clears throat> you know, I'm not for the left or the right or any organized group that has a code of conduct and, you know, tries to socially engineer the world. I'm for individuals. Individuals need to have their own morality that is above everything else. Because then the world gets a lot better. And when you, when you start doing what you think is right, you start feeling better about yourself. And you start doing more of what you think is right. And just, you get, you get so much more motivated to do good in the world. I know, I know. Someone's going to mention the Adventure Builders Club. Well, isn't that an organization? No, it's not an organization. Nothing organized about it. It's just a, a philosophy. Follow it or not. <clears throat> Just kind of a guideline for how to be a better better individual, not how to be part of a group. Uh, when I say organized groups, I don't mean anything against like your bowling team or something. I mean like groups that uh, are trying to decide how other people should live. You know, you, you kind of have to fill in all those blanks with your own common sense. All right.